Uh, good morning, buenos dias, and welcome everyone to this you know, fantastic day here in the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, my name is Dr. Francisco Cigarroa, and I am the Chancellor of the University of Texas System, and I really am so delighted to be with all of you today. It is said that every great journey begins with a single step. Today we are here to take that first step by breaking ground for a new medical academic building for the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Until this moment, <laughs> until this moment we have been preparing for this journey in so many different ways and for many years before this date. And now today's groundbreaking is a tangible stepping stone in the journey uh, to bring a medical school to this region of Texas. And in fact, we already have the founding dean of the medical school, Frank Fernandez. Frank, welcome. <laughs> now with all great things, nothing happens alone and no journey happens alone. And this is one that we could not have undertaken without many outstanding leaders who have embraced this plan and contributed it greatly to its success. Far before me, there have been individuals who have put thousands of hours before this vision. I want to personally thank, from the deepest part of my heart, both President Julieta Garcia of the University of Texas at Brownsville and President Robert Nelson of University of Texas at Pan Am, whose vision and tireless enthusiasm have energized us all. They deserve it. <laughs> And in that light, as we transition to UT RGV, I also want to give my deep gratitude to interim presidents Javitan Rodriguez and Bill Fannin, whose leadership is indispensable during the period as we move forward to the establishment of UT RGV. I also want to thank an individual who's had a profound impact on my life, but has also been having a profound impact on the Rio Grande Valley, and that is UT System Special Advisor Ken Schein, who has been a wise and persevering advocate for expanding and improving medical education in Texas. And Ken, from the bottom of my heart, I salute you. <laughs> I also want to thank someone who I first met at Aldo's restaurant uh, years ago and had no idea who this individual was or that I was going to you know, be spending thousands of hours with this individual, and that is Gene Powell. And Gene Powell not only served as chairman of the Board of Regents, uh, but now as vice chairman of the UT System Board of Regents. And because he and I have stood side by side in the planning stages of this journey from the very first day. We will finish what we began, expanding opportunities for the Rio Grande Valley and the people of Texas. And as we all know, Gene was born and raised in the valley, and he will always and always keeps his promise. So Gene, thank you. <laughs> and another individual who I've got to express my deepest gratitude is Regent Ernie Aliceta, who has also become one of the strongest and most active supporters of UT Rio Grande Valley and a terrific representative of the Valley who brings authentic experience and community spirit to our discussions about the university and the medical school. He is also the only Aggie who wears or has a possession of more burnt orange ties than even the most diehard Longhorn fan. And so Ernie, it has been such a privilege, uh, not only to establish a friendship with you, but also you know, this professional relationship that we have it was such an outstanding regent uh, from, from the Rio Grande Valley. I salute you. <laughs> and as we all know, we, you know, the reason why we do this is because of our students. And I'm so proud that we have student regent Max Richards, who's here to become better informed and more involved in the educational and health issues affecting this most important part of the state. So Max, thank you also for serving on the Board of Regents. I also want to thank the men and women 
uh, who represent us not only in the Texas Congress, uh, but also in the Texas legislature, who has followed the lead of the United Valley delegation in passing the bill to create the University of Texas at Organada Valley and its medical school. With us today are legislators whom you have sent to both Washington, D.C. and to Austin to represent you and to help transform this great region. And Congressman Ruben Hinojosa, Senator Shuri Hinojosa, Representative Oscar Longoria, Representative Eddie Lucio, Representative Sergio Munoz, Jr., and also we have representing of uh, many, many representatives of our cities, our great mayors of the New York and the Valley. So let's give all our elected officials. <laughs> I wish I had time to name everyone here who's been so much a part of this great journey. But there is one remarkable man who has joined us today, and, and that is an individual who's been a family practice physician for over 43 years and a fearless pioneer in healthcare and medical education for the underserved population of South Texas and the Rio Grande Valley. And I want to acknowledge him, who's my good friend, my compadre, and my mentor, Dr. Mario Ramirez. Let's give him a big applause. I'm really delighted that he's here today. I remember, uh, so my father, uh, Dr. Joaquin Cigarroa and Mario were, and my uncle Leo Cigarroa were basically um, a trio of individuals who were advancing medicine in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, um, and also higher education. And Mario became involved with, with the UT Board of Regents. He became a regent. And so, um, when my hand got thrown into the ring to become president of the Health Science Center, I, I called upon Mario Ramirez uh, to see whether this was a good idea or not. I think it took him about 30 minutes of tears before realizing it might be a good idea because he said, there's no way you can leave medicine <laughs> for administration. Well, I told him I'd take all on the weekends and I think I kept my promise, Mario, I will be going back to surgery and I never let that slide by. So Mario, thanks for that advice. Well, again, we're here to do this incredible groundbreaking for the medical school in the Valley. It's being built upon you know, the hard work that Mario Ramirez um, basically began. He opened the first hospital in Stark County in order to better serve his patients who had to travel either 55 miles to the hospital in McAllen or 90 miles to Laredo. I recall that my very first operation that I ever saw was at Stark County Hospital, or it's at, you know, at a hospital, actually not Stark County Hospital, it was a, it was a small hospital that Mother and I mean, just built. And I saw my very first operation, which is a cesarean section, and I think I passed out. <laughs> and Mother quickly realized I wasn't doing so well, and he said, you know, I passed out for an hour, at least you were only five minutes. And so I always want to encourage somebody. Well, when the first hospital closed its doors in Roma, he was also instrumental in opening up another, which is Star County Memorial Hospital. He's always had a steadfast advocate for the needs of medically underserved citizens in Texas, and his voice was heard by state officials, governors, and presidents of the United States. Governor Bill Clements appointed him as the regent of the University of Texas system, and Dr. Ramirez served from 1989 to 1995. During his tenure as Vice President for South Texas Programs at Health Science Center San Antonio, he created and he nurtured the MedEd program, which has inspired more than 2,000 students in South Texas and the Valley to establish careers in the health sciences. On a personal note, as I've stated, my very first introduction to surgery was with Mario Ramirez, and I think if it wasn't for that moment, you know, I probably would not have gone into surgery. I've said it before and I'll say it again, that Mario Ramirez is one of the greatest heroes that Texas has ever produced, and we're deeply honored that he's here today to voice his approval of a new medical school in the Rio Grande Valley. Mario, gracias. <laughs> well, a little bit about uh, this new 
building that we're constructing. The new medical academic building will be 88,000 square feet devoted to teaching facilities that promote faculty and student interaction at the earliest stages of medical school. It will include an auditorium, a digital library, clinical skills centers, preclinical laboratories, and anatomy teaching facility. It will also include multiple small classrooms, seminar rooms, and other features that offer opportunities for small group problem solving. Nothing happens without great people on this front either, and so I do want to recognize all the individuals such as uh, Jim Kazin, who oversees facilities and planning, and all his group in facilities for planning and construction that are so involved in making sure this building gets built on time and under budget. <laughs> I think two of you know also will like that. As the region-wide medical school interacting with and complementing faculties in Harlingen and Brownsville, this new building will make extensive use of online and distance learning and will support continuing education for all. Construction is scheduled to be completed in time to matriculate the first medical school class in the fall of 2016. And every time I say that, I see Frank Fernandez just shiver. But we like to set big goals. So as many of you know, I'm a third generation physician. Uh, my grandfather practiced medicine in San Antonio and Laredo. And at the age of 89, actually 90 now, my father continues to practice medicine in Laredo. He started there in 1950 and he has never left this region of this great state. When I was a boy, he provided me with a tremendous experience in understanding the challenges faced by a medically underserved region along the Texas-Mexico border region. He took me with him on house calls. And some of you may be old enough to remember house calls, but seeing his love for his practice, I received a first-hand view, not only the beautiful art of medicine, but how this art profoundly touches all classes from the poorest to the wealthiest without regard to economic status or homeland of origin. So not long ago, I asked my father if he had fulfilled everything he wanted to do as a physician. And I thought he was going to say a resounding yes. He actually did have one regret, and he conveyed that to me. He said, the only thing that I have regretted was that I've never had the opportunity to train young medical students and share his expertise with them because there was no medical school in Laredo or the <coughs> Texas-Mexico border region. Well, that will never happen again, and that's why it's a bit personal to me. I view the building of a new medical school in the Valley as a way to honor Mario Ramirez, my father, my uncle, my grandfather, and scores of physicians who have practiced medicine and are still practicing along the border and in South Texas. We have great physicians in this region of our state, and now they have an opportunity to educate the next generation, and so well deserved that is. They have waited their entire lifetimes to see young physicians study and train here, where their hometowns are, where their families are, and where they can remain and practice the beautiful art of medicine in their home place and in service to the people that they love. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we're one step closer to completing that journey. Thank you all for joining us as we take that first step. And I promise you it will be a journey that astonishes you, astonishes you and that it will transform the entire region of Texas. Let's give this vision an applause. And now it's my pleasure to introduce a wonderful friend but also the president of the University of Texas Health Science Center of San Antonio, Dr. Bill Henrich. Prior to being named president in 2009, Dr. Henrich served as the dean of the School of Medicine and the vice president for medical affairs. Under his leadership, the Health Science Center at San Antonio has continued to manage and support the regional academic health center in the valley, including the facility across the street from us, which is our research division. The Health Science Center has provided opportunities for hundreds of medical students to train here, and we're very grateful to President Henrich for his commitment to medical education in the Rio Grande Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of what we have been able to accomplish would not have been possible without the dedication of the administration at the Health Science Center and the faculty and the staff who understand how important it is to establish this medical school. And for that, I believe the entire Health Science Center in San Antonio deserves an applause.
So Bill, welcome to the boat. Thank you, Chancellor Sigaroa. Ladies and gentlemen, what a happy occasion. It is my honor and privilege to be here participating in the development of the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley School of Medicine has been a personal privilege for me and for all of my colleagues in San Antonio. And I'm proud of the work that's been done to get the project to this stage, to be able to break ground on this wonderful new building and uh, soon to see it rise uh, out of the ground. You know, it's a unique position for one medical school to be so involved in the development of another medical school. That usually doesn't happen. But it has been uh, a ringside seat on establishing the correct infrastructure for this, uh, for this project. So it's a particular moment of pride for all of us in San Antonio, and I'm here to represent them and their spirit in this meeting today. And for me, it's a particular personal moment of joy because we've had so many discussions over the years since I've been in San Antonio about how we were going to do this, how we were going to order things to get it done, and today it has certainly gotten track. I want to let the audience know that the first students, the first 15 students on the South Texas track have been admitted to the medical school in San Antonio to the first two years there their last two years here, and in four years they're going to graduate from South Texas. A moment of great, great pride. So they're already on the way. They're coming here. My assignment is very simple today. I want to echo what the Chancellor has said about uh, our Health Science Center staff, which has devoted its time and talent to the creation of success in this project. Jim Kaysen, mentioned by the Chancellor, is pivotal. He's a name all of you in the room should know because, uh, you know, Chancellor, I told him he had to bring the project on time, but on budget. You just said it had to be under budget. Somebody get a memo to Jim to tell him that the, the goalposts have changed a little bit, but, we'll, but under his leadership, I'm sure they'll, they'll do it. Gene Powell will do it, okay. Uh, not worried at all about that. Uh, Ray, Ray, Martin, <laughs> Ray Martin assists uh, Jim and he does a wonderful job. You know, one of the key essential features of a new medical school is uh, having a graduate medical education program. Doctors Lois Brady and Bob Nolan have been working on this from their perch in San Antonio. This is important because the doctors who do their residencies here ultimately have a substantial chance of staying here and practicing here. So it's important that these residency programs be very strong, and Lois and Bob to do, deserve kudos for that. Flossie Edens Fallensby is managing the undergraduate medical education infrastructure. She's here on the second row. Raise your hand, Flossie. Just, she's here with me today. Glad to have you here, Flossie. Thank you for your work. And three people I'll mention before signing off who deserve uh, credit for the work they've done on the financing of all this. and. The, integration with the University of Texas system, or Gabe Hernandez, who's the Senior Associate Dean for Finance at the Medical School in San Antonio, Andrea Marks, our Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Michael Black, who's our Chief Operating Officer. All of these individuals have dedicated time uh, to this project, and we'll make certain that we do stay on time, on budget, and bring this across the goal line. So once again, it is my pleasure to be here with you today. I couldn't be more excited. I bring greetings from San Antonio and good wishes for uh, the success of this wonderful venture. It's my pleasure now to introduce the founding president of the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley, Dr. Guy Bailey. Please welcome him to the podium. Thank you so much. It's, it's an honor to be here uh, and, and a pleasure, and I appreciate all of you being here as well. This is a uh, an important day, and, and I can't stress how important. What's happening right here in the Rio Grande Valley is the most significant thing happening in American higher education today. I want you to think about that. It's, it's important for what's happening here, but it is the most significant thing happening in higher education in the United States, and it's happening right here, and it's happening because of you, because of the vision, the collective vision, the collective work of all of you. 
This is remarkable. People around the country notice this, and I can't tell you what an honor it is for me to be part of it. I've had a great career in higher education. I've done a lot of fun things, a lot of good things, but I've never been a part of anything this significant or this important, and I can't tell you what an honor it is. I want to thank all of you again for everything you've done. This is a tremendous vision, tremendous thing to be a part of, and I think you'll see the transformative effect of this as we go forward. By the way, I've been on the job two months. Hey, what better way to finish your second month on the job? It's tremendous. And if you look at the footprint of the new medical school buildings out there, it's tremendous. Think about the impact that will have. That'll have an impact in generating jobs. It'll have an impact on health care in the region. And you know, you, you can't ask for anything better. The most pleasant part of my job today, however, is to introduce the founding dean of the medical school, Francisco Fernandez, and many of you have already met him, uh, is our founding dean. He, was the, he came to us from South Florida, where he was chair of psychiatry. I'm always careful not to talk about my dreams around Frank. He just, you know, he is a psychiatrist, so just be, be careful. Uh, he, he, I, working with, with Dean Fernandez has been one of the great pleasures of my career. He is truly uh, a tremendous man, a great visionary. He works all the time, I know, because I get emails at two in the morning and four in the morning. It's a, I guess he's going to bed at two and getting up at four, so. But, his hard work and his vision will truly make this a tremendous medical school. Uh, Dean Fernandez. Now, how can you interpret the dreams of a man that talks about mascots? <laughs> And then I went and confused him by saying, you know, guy, all I really need is the mascot to have ears. And you could see him go, oh, God, it must be a psychiatric thing he's talking about, <laughs> rolling his eyes. And I said, no, no. And I have pestered him with Photoshop pictures of different mascots with ears, a white coat, and the ears, because I need to hang stethoscopes off the ears. So please, I don't mean to unduly influence you. Uh, vote for something with ears, please. <laughs> uh, now that wasn't too psychiatric. I want to thank everybody. This is really a historic moment here, and it's really thanks to all of you that this is uh, history taking place here in the valley. There are many states that have or are planning on having a new medical school. But all I can tell them, their legislators, their governors, their presidents, their chancellors is, eat your heart out. <laughs> and the reason that I say that is because I don't think any one of them, I could be wrong and corrected, but I don't think any one of them has the mission that we have here. Your new medical school is going to have a central role. A central role to see your dream become a reality by bringing the best and the brightest students, the best and the brightest teachers, the best and the brightest researchers, and the best and the brightest doctors here to the Valley. Together, we will provide a greatly enhanced clinical education program, which already exists, thanks to the good work, as Dr. Heinrich said about uh, Dean Gonzalez and his A-team, that has been here on the ground, creating the opportunities to have a top-notch third-year and fourth-year experiences for these medical students. Just think of it. Fifty percent of my job has already been done. I have to expand the scope of that work to include the MS1s and MS2s. It would also revolutionize the way that technology and competency-based and education and innovation will occur. It is so exciting uh, to be part of a program that's going to be uh, uh, middle school to medical school, M2M. And it need not be medical school, it could be masters. Um, uh, and the learning platforms and energies, synergies and energies that that will create with our hospital partners and with the university. Um, 
Together you're going to produce outstanding science, research, um, and leading to better medical treatments and technologies to create the opportunities that people talk about, about connecting the science that will go on with the community in a transformative way. So we're going to improve not just health, but life. Life in the Rio Grande Valley. Now, you heard Dr. Bailey say that, that I was his only management problem, because it's only the two of us. <laughs> so he has been desperately hunting, not just for a mascot, but for a recruit that he could call his own. So I am sure it's to say, go deal with Dean Fernandez. <laughs> So I am pleased to announce that we have jointly found an honorary recruit. Guy, would you join me up here, please? Um, the recruit has ears, by the way. I just wanted to uh, <laughs> let, 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 and, and does wear a stethoscope. And you could call him a weekender, because I think he uh, does just medicine on the weekends. So I am pleased that he will carry this appointment at UTRGB. College of Medicine. So, Dr. Sigaro, will you please join us? Here at the <laughs> Thank you. Guy, take it away. Okay. <clears throat> this certificate indicates that you are our first uh, uh, employee, <laughs> other than Frank. And I can't tell you, I mean, how, how do you have, a, have better employees than Dean Fernandez, Chancellor Sigaroa? Right, what, anyway, what this does is recognize your vision and your role, and I, I don't think that any of us can underestimate the role that you've played here. What, your vision will transform this entire area forever. And we are eternally grateful to you for that. Thank you so much. This is good. And it's pro bono. Good luck for the next one. Wait. I think they want us back, bro. Oh, I see. Okay. Does this mean I got two bosses? You're still the boss. You're still the boss. Thank you. So we're 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 glad that um, we could give you the respect and admiration in this way now. Now, now I, I will tell you, Chancellor, that, that one was printed at home. You're, you're <laughs> the, uh, the, the real one will be forthcoming. Uh, but now, I only, uh, I'm only on the job three months. I beat Dr. Bailey by one month getting here. It's like those bumper stickers from about 30 years ago. I wasn't born in Texas, but I got here as quick as I could. Uh, after a journey throughout the United States, having been here uh, back in the 80s through the mid-90s. Our community is intense and resilient and strong, and no matter what the differences are in the end, the Valley stands united with this shared belief and goals for our community and our family, and I have met no one that is easily indomitable. We have a shared geography, one heck of a beautiful beach, uh, shared and shared values, and now you share a university with a medical school that has one mission for, uh, for solutions for our region. In the midst of all this, I've shared my Jeep with one man, one person who has multiple distinctions and honors, a very thoughtful man who only expects one thing, well, he expects two out of me, um, and I'm not sure which one's number one, but it's both excellence and the LCME. Okay, they flip-flop every once in a while. 
uh, but it's excellence in every arena that's part of the mission of, of every medical school. So education for sure, uh, creating the academic home by way of the research, um, service, and patient care. Fortunately, he has been my writing partner through the valley, sharing everything, including conference calls along the way, but also sharing his insights, his wisdom, and his humor. And while I know I'm borrowing a phrase from a beer company, this is terrible, <laughs> he is the most extraordinary man uh, <laughs> in the world. And this is the, dis the person that I have the distinct honor to call into the podium. So, Dr. Shine. <clears throat> Frank, thank you for a, a remarkable invitation. I do want you to know that while we share the, the Jeep, I have learned that in the three months that Frank has been here, in addition to all of the other things he's done academically, he knows where the best restaurants are. <laughs> Not only that, if you go to the restaurant with him, you can be sure that at least half a dozen people will come over to the table to say hello and ask for something. So he's really been right in the middle of South Texas very quickly, believe me. One of the remarkable things about uh, th this school, as the already been alluded to, is the level and extent of community support. That community support has been present for decades and has been consummated recently in a number of very critical forms. Even before the legislature approved the new university uh, and uh, the new medical school, uh, the leaders of four of the cities in Hidalgo County, plus uh, the leader of the county, Judge Garcia, indicated that they would be prepared to make a commitment of $50 million over 10 years in support of the medical school. That was remarkable. It was a statement that the communities, that the local uh, leadership was prepared to put real support, financial support and means into this new institution. The monies will be used to support the operations of that medical school, including research, education, and patient care here in Hidalgo County. The monies will be used in collaboration with the $10 million a year, which the Regents of the University of Texas pledged for 10 years, and state support, which will be essential and in the next session, hopefully will be increased so that we can achieve our goal which is to create here in, at UTRGV a truly great medical school. That's the only thing we want. I want to particularly thank Romero Garza, the city manager of Edinburgh, and all the other city managers and the county executives who worked very hard to put together the Memorandum of Understanding, which we will be signing in the next few moments. It is a remarkable accomplishment. The County of Hidalgo has committed a million dollars in this MOU. McAllen, two million dollars. Edinburgh, one million dollars. Far, five hundred thousand dollars. And Mission, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. These are very significant, substantial commitments uh, to the success of this new medical school. And it's appropriate. <laughs> And it's appropriate that we do this signing at the time that we are breaking the ground on the medical school uh, here uh, in, uh, in Edinburgh as part of this activity. I want to thank the mayors, uh, the leadership of the county, uh, and all the other members of the legislative bodies, councils and so forth, for agreeing to make this kind of commitment. We thank you and we pledge to you that our commitment to build a medical school of the very first class in all aspects of what it does. And I know that we're going to make you proud. It's been a long process to get to this point. 
And it's now my pleasure to introduce a man who's been on our side and by our side every step of the way. He authored the legislation to create the new university and the School of Medicine, as well as the hospital district in Hidalgo County. He was instrumental in drafting the Memorandum of Understanding and has worked with each of the cities and county to garner countywide support. We're so grateful for such a supportive partner and a strong advocate. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sen Senator Juan Chuy Hinojosa. Thank you so much being here present on this very special day. I remember about 15 years ago when we first broke ground, groundbreaking ceremony for the RAC. Uh, and Senator Eddie Lucio and myself, for many, many years, for the last 15, 20 years, <clears throat> we've been working to bring a medical school here to South Texas. And we know the benefits we'll receive in terms of increased health care, more doctors, better education, expand our economy, and bring down many related healthcare businesses. But I just have to say a few words about my delegation. It's important to understand how we got here, that to pass legislation, you need teamwork. And the valid delegation from Representative Terry Canales to Oscar Longoria, to Sergio Munoz, to Bobby Guerra, Armando Martinez, Eddie Lucio III, Rene Oliveira, and Sarah Eddie Lucio, and our staff worked many long hours negotiating, drafting legislation. I think we drafted this bill at least 25, 30 times. Right, Jennifer? <laughs> uh, the staff does all that work. And they worked long hours late into the night. But at the other day, it's us working together as a community. Uh, with the regents, with the UT system, the administration, uh, with our mayors and local public officials, our community leaders, <clears throat> to make this a reality. And here we are. And this is a very important step, not only to deal with health care for our indigent, but for health care for all of us. It's extremely important that we have a moment in history for us here in the Valley, and we have seized that moment to reach our goal and create a better life for all of us here in South Texas. And we are not finished yet, but this team will remain together, working towards the day when we have a full-fledged medical school here in South Texas. And I will pledge to you that next session, the Valley Delegation will continue to work together as a team. And yes, many times we have a difference of opinion. We try to work those issues out and do what's best for us here in the Rio Grande Valley. And thank you so much for being here today. And I look forward to the future. We'll continue our mission. We'll continue our goals to bring about a first class medical school to the River Edney Valley. And one of those key leaders here in the Valley was my good friend, Mayor Richard Garcia. Uh, Richard uh, took the lead uh, and was very instrumental uh, in making sure that we kept everybody on the same page. Uh, and let me introduce my good friend, Mayor Richard Garcia. Thank you for the kind words, Senator, and uh, I do remember you talked about 15 years ago, about 11 years ago in 03, when we inaugurated that first building, uh, it was under a tent, uh, about 120 degrees, and I want to congratulate whoever decided to do this inside today, so. <laughs> uh, I'll try to be brief. Some years ago, a uh, great American said, I have the audacity to believe that peoples everywhere can have three meals a day for their bodies, dignity, equality and freedom for their spirit, and education and culture for their minds. 87 years ago, way before that quote became famous, this community had the audacity 
the same dream, the same hope. For 87 years, this university has been committed to this community and to this region. And for 87 years, we have witnessed the transformation from what was a two-year college to what we now know as the University of Texas Pan American and soon to become the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Today, we, we know that we gather to celebrate another milestone by this great institution, the groundbreaking for this Rio Grande Valley Medical School. And uh, Dr. Sigoroa, uh, we, the city of Edinburgh, and our, all our neighboring communities, thank you for your, your vote of confidence. You and the rest of the University of Texas system, as is very well represented here today, uh, your audacity has morphed us into a new university and brought us a new medical school. You believed in us, and we want you to know that we believe in you too. My friend and former law partner, County Judge Ramon Garcia, will explain to us how this community will shortly have the opportunity to make a monumentous investment further ensuring our children's educational tomorrow. And to all of you, uh, and about uh, Ramon, I, I brings to mind, uh, I mentioned we were law partners, and uh, I think I made a, a good call on getting involved in this one. I've made some not so good calls in the past, and we were partners. Uh, Ramon told me that he wanted to move on to uh, civil practice, that that was the future of law in the Valley. And, uh, uh, we, we, we parted ways, and I continued in my uh, realm of the law, and Ramon became one of the most successful and therefore wealthy uh, civil lawyers in the Valley. <laughs> <laughs> About the same time, uh, not long before that, I remember sitting watching the Ed Sullivan show, and uh, I was a drummer with a with a rock group when I was young, and uh, we were both in high school together, and and uh, there was a group on Ed Sullivan's show, and uh, uh, my band used to play soul music back then, and uh, I made the prediction that uh, nobody would remember those guys in six months, and those were the Beatles, so. Uh, <laughs> have to own up to those mistakes. But I have no doubt that the decision today, <laughs> uh, again, to all of you, uh, Dr. Sigoroa, my new friend, Dr. Fernandez, uh, my friend, neighbor, colleague on the Economic Development Board and our present leader, and I guess the dubious honor of being the last leader for UTPA, Dr. Avidan Rodriguez. Uh, to all of you that so, and you know, that's a long line of great leadership that we've had at UTPA. Uh, and I'd be remiss uh, to mention and, and working towards this university, I know I saw him here, I haven't said hello to him, but uh, uh, our beloved, uh, Dr. Robert Nelson, I remember when we were working this, uh, me telling him, uh, uh, Robert, you know, you may be talking yourself out of a job here. And he said, you know, this is bigger than, than me. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than all of us. So I think we should give him a, a big hand. <laughs> And again, I thank you all for devoting your valuable time, your energy, and your heart to ensuring uh, educational ex excellence and distinction uh, for tomorrow. To all of you that are here, that helped, that will continue to help, that provide leadership, uh, my friends the mayor sitting over there, Jim, and, and Polo, and Beto, and Tony, and uh, all of you in this room are here for a reason. All of you have worked, have aspired, have dreamed, and to you I say, Mis respetos. As an attorney, though, 
the uh, mayor knows that there's an, always an opportunity for cross-examination. <laughs> so it's my privilege to introduce you to someone who can respond. Uh, the county judge in Hidalgo County has been, again, one of those individuals who has been continually supportive of efforts to create this uh, institution uh, and has provided extraordinary leadership in a very complex set of issues in order to obtain the kind of support that we're talking about. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Hidalgo County Judge Ramon Garcia. Uh, good morning. Man, what a beautiful day. I'm glad Richard, uh, by the way, thank you, Richard, for those kind words. Uh, I'm glad he took it beyond 15 years. I'm glad he went back to 1927. Uh, whoever those visionaries were that decided to set up a, an institution of higher learning here in South Texas. They've been involved in trying to attract all those people from the, the Midwest to bring them down to invest and develop our area, and, but they, they saw the need for higher education and they went out there and they established it. Edinburgh Junior College, 1927, two-year institution, less than 50,000 people living in, in this area at the time. But what a benefit to this South Texas community through the years. Tremendous. There is no downside to education, and they certainly demonstrated it. Uh, well, I'm a product. I got out and, and I graduated in 1970. <laughs> Chewy and I were in it together, and Chewy had just come back from Vietnam as a Marine, and uh, he went on to law school like I did and Richard did. Uh, but been a big plus to a lot of people in our South Texas community. I don't think that uh, they could have imagined the positive impact uh, that uh, that facility back then was going to have on our area, but it has. It has. Now, during the process, you know, we had to do some negotiating. We had to sit down and visit with the University of Texas system the 800-pound gorilla on a block. And their, the voice and face of the UT system was writer Dr. Cigarroa. So we got to know each other. We, you know, we went to his office. He came down. We went to the, testify at different committees. And uh, we finally sat down in McAllen uh, at our last and final meeting. And we had worked out an agreement uh, that uh, we're about to get involved in executing. And he makes a comment. He says, this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. And I point out, first of all, I think this guy's been seeing too many old movies. <laughs> and I point out that, that, you know, you realize that uh, that comment was made by uh, Humphrey Bogart playing the role of Rick in Casablanca when he, there towards the end, when he put his arm around uh, Louis, the French captain, and said, Louis, this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. And I was trying to make a joke out of it, not realizing at the time that it was such a profound statement, because this is the beginning of a beautiful uh, relationship. Now, I wanted to acknowledge Dr. Mike Nevarez uh, and other individuals that have been very involved in getting us here today. In my lifetime, there's been uh, Senator Jim Bates, uh, Senator Raul Longoria, uh, Senator Carlos Truan. Uh, these are people that were at the table or tried to get on the table as best they could back in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s when really the state didn't care much about our South Texas community. And I remember Mike being our, our president and having to go during budget season to try to get money for our area. And when uh, he was there, one time he came back and he came back with about 18 or 20 million dollars. Of course, at that time we thought he'd hit the mother load. <laughs> Today, this year alone, we've received 345 million to our area. That's a tremendous, tremendous benefit. And we certainly want to acknowledge and thank all of the efforts of Dr. Cigaroa and company, because all of us that are involving bureaucracies know that if the guy at the top, if 
the chief doesn't want it, it just ain't going to happen. So obviously he cared enough to want it. We just needed to work out the fine details, which we have, and we did, and we're about to acknowledge. But uh, thank you for all of the individuals that have been involved, that have been uh, uh, acknowledged here today, and thank you all for being here. I'd like to call our mayors and uh, the county judge forward. We have here a copy of the Memorandum of Understanding, and we're going to ask each of the mayors and, uh, and uh, the, the county judge to sign that agreement. Uh, you've already met Mayor Richard Garcia of Edinburgh, who's uh, made some comments, and you've met Judge Ramon Garcia of Hidalgo County. We're also joined by Mayor James Darling of McAllen, Jim, why don't you just wave to the crowd? Um, Norberto Salinas of Mission, Beto, there he is, right here, and Mayor Leo Palacios of, uh, of FAR. Thank you for being here. We're very grateful to these mayors for the work that they have done, and also to, again, the members of their city councils, the county commissioners, all of the others who played a, a crucial role in this activity. It's the same. It's the same one we showed you the form, Mr. Mayor. No, no slay of hand. Before we conclude this portion of our uh, program, I would just like to re-emphasize that our view of this medical school is that it is not only going to provide enormous benefits in terms of health, health care, economic development in the region, but this medical school is going to have an impact on all the rest of the state of Texas and the nation. This is a first uh, a medical school of the first class, and these mayors and the county judge clearly bear testimony to the support of the community to make this a reality. Thank you all very much, gentlemen. It's now my pleasure to introduce the vice chair of our Board of Regents, already referred to by uh, the chancellor, having been, I guess, born and raised in West Coast, uh, Vice Chairman of the Board of Regents, uh, Vice Chairman Pop. We'll, we'll give the press a little bit of time to finish photographing the MOU. We can email you a copy, guys. <laughs> well, all I can say is, is echo what uh, the previous speakers have commented on today and the thank yous to each of you in the room and all that you've done. I want to bring you greetings from the Board of Regents uh, at the University of Texas. We had a great two-day meeting last week. Uh, all of them asked me to wish you well and tell you how proud they are of all that you have accomplished in getting this done and how much they appreciate being your partner in this endeavor. Uh, as you all have heard 
Uh, some of you have heard before, this goes a long way back with me. Uh, my grandparents moved here in the late teens. My grandfather, Powell, uh, was a graduate of the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston as a pharmacist. Since he since he was a pharmacist, that meant he had a little bit of medical training, so they sent him to France during World War I to be a medic. When he came back, he married my grandmother and they moved to Mercedes where he ran a drugstore uh, uh, for a man out of San Antonio. And later, he came to Westlaco when W. E. Sturt Land Company was cutting Westlaco out of the brush, picked out a lot for his drugstore and his house, and, and lived there until the 50s uh, when he passed away. He was known as Doc Powell because he was the uh, only medical resource that the people of the Mid Valley had. The roads were dirt and sand and very, very often muddy, and people came to his house during the night uh, looking for medicine, looking to be taken care of. My parents were born in 1923 in Westlaco and in Mercedes. Uh, no hospital in those days, they were both born at home and they were lifelong advocates of higher education. And you've heard that my mother, in 1940, uh, rode the bus from Mercedes to Hidalgo County Junior College and Edinburgh Junior College. And she is very proud today to be a graduate of that institution. Uh, she is uh, alive and well and will be uh, 91 in October. And I was at her house uh, Sunday afternoon and she said to wish all of you well and uh, how proud she was of the Rio Grande Valley. And, and she said, and you, you haven't done bad either. I said, I'll, I'll give you a <laughs> uh, So my purpose today is to wrap this up. I, it's been a long, long journey. Uh, I had the privilege of playing football for Coach Darrell Royal, and he only allowed us to have one statement in the room. Uh, many of you all that play sports know that coaches post things all over the locker room to inspire people. Coach Royal had one statement over the door as we left the locker room. And the statement was, there is no such thing as luck. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. And what he would tell us over and over that in life and in football, you don't win games in September and October and November. You win games in March and April and May and June by getting ready, by working out, by conditioning yourself and getting prepared. And he would say to us, you know, it, it'll be the third or fourth quarter. Everybody will be tired. We'll be up by two points. A running back will come off tackle. You'll either have the stamina to make the tackle and stop him, and we win the game. Or you'll be a half step behind because you didn't condition yourself. You didn't get prepared. The opportunity is going to present itself to you at some point in your life. And you're either going to take take advantage of the opportunity or you're not. And the only way you'll be able to take advantage is if you've gotten prepared. And very often you don't know what you're getting prepared for. <clears throat> Everybody in this room and all of your forefathers and my grandparents were getting us ready. They really worked really hard at this. I mean, how many meetings have people in this room, how many hours have you contributed going to meetings, going to Austin to testify, going to Washington to testify? asking for money, meeting with the senators, meeting with our congressmen, uh, belonging to Chamber of Commerce committees. I, I was here till I was 36. I participated in many of those meetings. We had some successes. We have Pan American. We had Brownsville, UT Brownsville partnership with Southmost. We didn't have tough money. And it was a, it was a shame, it was a struggle. So when I became chairman of the board in 2011, or actually, I step back, I came to the Board of Regents in the spring of 2009 at the same time the chancellor was coming on as the new chancellor. We were rookies together. And then by, I have no idea how I became chairman in 2011, but I did, and the chancellor and I started working together. He was writing his framework for excellence, which came out of a couple of task forces that we we're, we're working on that spring. And he came to me with a list of the things he wanted to accomplish and put in his framework. And one of them was South Texas. And one of them was the health of Texas. And neither one of us knew how we were going to do this. But before long, we kept going and we kept working and we kept trying. 
And the chancellor called me in October of 2012. Now remember, that's just a month and a half before the session starts in 2013. So we had run right up against, we had run right up against the finish line. And he said it was 11.30, 11.45 at night. He just finished the transplant. He said, I have an idea. He said, Steve Collins in our legal department has come up with an idea for this new university. And if we get it passed by two-thirds majority, we get puff money. And if we get puff money, we change the world. And I don't know how long we talked. Uh, I remember sitting there staring out in the darkness listening to this guy thinking, you know, I really love this guy. He's really smart. He's really good. And he may be nuts. <laughs> but I, I, Francisco and I, about 1 o'clock, 1.30, something like that, we finally agreed that we had no other choice but to go forward. And think about it. We're not even two years from that day. Now, all of our forefathers spent all those years getting us prepared. And we're standing on their shoulders because they did all the hard spade work. They did all the hard work behind us. So it made it somewhat easier for us to bring everybody together around a central idea, form a new university, form a new medical school, and bring puff money to the, to the valley. And Senator Hinojosa, you know, we've, we've talked about this all of a sudden, we've got, what would you say, Judge, 300 million plus? I mean, between friends, a million or two, it's, I don't know exactly how much it is, it's a lot of money. And I'm very, very proud of it. So I said to Pedro Reyes, our Executive Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs from Alamo, Texas, and to Francisco Cigarroa from Laredo, and we're sitting in the room with me being from Westlaco, I said, guys, if we can't get this done now with the three of us in the leadership, shame on us. And I want to tell you, we could never have done it without the support of the regents. The South Texas delegation did a fantastic job, absolutely outstanding. The citizens of South Texas did a fantastic job. And I'm here to thank you and to congratulate you and tell you that the regents could not be more proud of you. And to close this up, I think that <clears throat> We need to give a round of applause and appreciation uh, to the guy who did this with us and who led us and who was so strong for us. And he's uh, become a very, very dear, close friend. He, there are 10 siblings in the Cigarrillo family, and I have been uh, officially added as number 11. <laughs> and I could not be more proud of a man than Francisco Cigarroa, someone that left Laredo High School, one of the poorest high schools in the nation, who went to Yale, went on to Mass General, came back, went to Hopkins to work, and then came back to San Antonio and led that institution, and then got drafted in 2000, at the end of 2008, uh, to start a role as chancellor in 2009. And I think he has done an incredible job. He has set us on a path at both the UT system and in the state of Texas. And I would tell you that the Board of Regents and the Chancellor's job has never, ever been stronger. I think Ernie will agree with me that the Board has never been in a stronger position. We've never been more together. We just hired a great new uh, Chancellor that you've all heard about, but he'll go a long way before he tops Francisco Cigarroa. So, would you all please stand and give this man a round of applause? <laughs> Pedro, and I want, I want you all to, another native son, when has, a, when has the uh, University of Texas system had uh, a young man <laughs> from Alamo, Texas, right. <laughs> leading to the academic affairs of this great institution. We're so proud of you, Pedro. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate and, he, and he still won't say viva Pintaras to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all.